All right, now, as promised, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you in to breakouts to have a look at uh, part three and part four together. Um, it's 2.34, so I'm gonna give you, well, let's call it like seven or eight minutes, okay? I'll give you a timer and I'll wander around the rooms and see how you're faring. Um, what I'd like you to do is part three, you can see is the big muscly question, it's worth three marks. Um, if you've already gotten up to that, like maybe you've been working away, plugging away in the background or you attempted this you know, during your revision, I'm looking for, I've got two fairly distinct ways of solving this, um, and I want you to see if you can find more than that if you can, and, and importantly, make a decision about why one method is better than another if you think that is the case, okay? Um, so go ahead and do that. If you have time to get onto part four, then do it. Um, give me a second. I'm gonna arrange the breakout rooms now, and then I'm gonna send you off, okay? I think we're all back, so welcome uh, back to the main room. Uh, as promised, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do this, and it was really interesting to me as I wandered around the rooms that like this is a question which in some ways once you see the solution it's a bit like as I've described before seeing a finished jigsaw puzzle and you're like oh of course that piece has to go there right but when you're looking at like I did a puzzle um, in the last school holidays um, when we were much sooner into lockdown um, where there was like this one section and I swear the whole section was just black right and you're like there's like 15 pieces and they're all black and you're like I don't know, like you can't, like the number of permutations there are for how they all fit together. You just have to use the shapes of the pieces rather than their color to try and work out how they fit. And to begin a question like this feels a little bit like that, right? I saw some people thinking about how to use internal ratio division formulas because that's kind of sort of what you've got here. Um, if you think back to what we were doing here with M's and N's, that might be familiar because that's often literally the letters that are used. Um, and another few people who I saw used a method to do with similar triangles, which I will show you, but I'll have you think about why that method, while it works, in fact, it is the first method I came up with just when I was having a go at this, um, why that method, whilst valid, is marvelously inelegant and inefficient. I'll show you why once we get there, okay? So, what more sophisticated knowledge do we have to access to to solve this? And I want you to recognize the fact that because T is the intersection of P, R, and O, S, P, R, and OS, and then T is the intersection point, right? I wonder if that clues you into a piece of knowledge from um, vectors that we've learned in extension one or two that sort of makes mincemeat of this question if you use it appropriately. And that is when you're trying to find a point of intersection, if you have the equations of those two lines, all you have to do is solve simultaneously, which we are exceedingly good at, and you're off uh, and to the races. So really the tricky part is, can I work out what the appropriate equations are and then solving them is actually the easy part, okay? So we've got PR and OS. I'm gonna do them in reverse order and you'll see why in a second. So let's think about line OS for a moment. What is its equation? Well, if you think about vector equations, I'm gonna call this, um, normally we use like R as our, you know, whatever equals, but R has been taken in this question, so I'm gonna call it L for line. Um, we have two, every vector equation of a line is made up of two pieces, right? There's the position vector. It's like, what's the vector that gets you onto that line? And then there's the direction vector, which says like, once you're on the line, like which way are you facing, okay? Now, not a trick question, but it is a little bit weird in this case. What would be the position vector or one of the appropriate or the easiest position vector to use for line OS. Think about it carefully. Here's OS right here. Okay. Um, I wonder if you guys can post in the chat what the appropriate uh, position vector is. What's the easiest vector to add to get onto line OS? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, bam, well done. Angad's uh, got it in one. When you think, you start from the origin, right? But line OS, it goes through the origin. So no position vector or no further position vector is required to get onto this line. So I'm just gonna leave like a conspicuous absence here for the position vector. And then I add on the direction vector, right? So there'll be some parameter, we usually use lambda. And then you say, well, from now we're on the line, OS, um, what direction do you need to look in? Well, to, to get along from O to S, um, the easiest way is to say, well, you go along O, R, and then you go along R, S. The reason being, you know what both of these vectors are. Um, <laughs> pardon the pun. O, R is little r, and you can tell me what R, S is equal to, right? Can you, again, post it in the chat? What would it be? this vector, given the information that you've been told in the question, and even on the diagram, what is RS going to be equal to? How can you state it in terms of the vectors you've been told? 
Any takers? Who can see it? Well done. Our anger is just too too quick. We're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to let other people have a chance. Anger. But thank you for contributing so helpfully. It's um, half because you've got this midpoint here. S is the midpoint of RQ, and it's. Uh, parallel to P, so the directions are the same, but the magnitude is halved, right? So therefore, my direction vector for line OS is going to be, there's my lambda for the parameter, and it's going to be R plus half P. Bam, that's it. That is line OS. Now all I need to do is work out what line PR is, and then I can solve these simultaneously. So PR takes a little more thinking, but not much, right? Again, I'm going to call this L, and I think now, again, I need a position vector, right? I've got to get onto the line PR first. Here we go. There are two obvious ways to do it. You can either use P to get onto the line, or you can use R to get onto the line. It really doesn't matter. As we've seen before, there's an infinite number of valid vector equations for a single line because your position vector can take you anywhere onto the line that you like. I'm just going to go with P just because that's the um, alphabetically easiest one to get to. Um, be careful here, there's another parameter that gets used but it may not be the same parameter that we got before, the lambda parameter. So um, you know you might call it something else like say mu, choose whatever Greek letter suits your fancy. And now I need a direction vector, right? So I've successfully gone um, up onto the line PR. So here I am at P after doing this um, little P vector. And now I need to go along this line here, either, either direction really. Uh, it makes sense to go from P to R. So I hope you can see that's negative P plus R or more easily written R take away P. Okay, so there's the direction vector uh, moving from P to R um, by way of the origin, okay? And once you've done this, um, you just need to solve simultaneously. So it's still a three mark um, proof, so I will say solve simultaneously. And I'm just going to take the right hand sides of both of these equations and wham them together, right? So what have I got here? Let's be, I'm going to be a bit cheap, sorry, just for the sake of time. And hopefully you guys will be able to um, write and catch up with me. There's my left and my right hand side. And what I'm trying to solve here for is that there's a particular um, parameter, either lambda or mu, that will get me to this point t, right? Does that make sense? Um, you know, I can travel along OS using, by varying the parameter lambda, but there's a particular lambda that will get me to this spot here. Or um, it's just as valid to say, um, I, there's some particular parameter mu, which as I travel along PR will get me to this particular spot. T, right? So that's what I'm trying to find, a value of lambda or a value for mu, either of them will do, right? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit by expanding both sides, right? Usually expanding makes things worse, but why is expanding here going to make things easier? Um, I actually might put this in alphabetical order, you'll see why in a second. Uh, I'm going to get uh, half lambda p here on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, uh, have a look here, right? If I am collecting like terms here, how many of the little p vectors do I have? I have one here and I have minus mu of them here, right? So therefore I can factorize that out, one minus mu, lots of the p vector, and then I've got mu lots of the r vector, okay? Why did I arrange it in this way? Well, it's because it enables me to compare these coefficients here. Can you see that? It's why I put it in alphabetical order, p first and then r. There's a lambda here and a mu there. So comparing my coefficients or equating coded coefficients because I know that these two have to be, um, these two sets of things, the P and the R's have to be equal to each other. Uh, let's do the blue ones first because they're pretty easy, right? Lambda is going to equal mu and I should say I get that from the R vectors. Um, let's call that equation one and then from the P vectors, what do I get? Well, on the left hand side I've got half lambda. On the right hand side, I've got one take away mu. And now I can use um, you know, this result that I just substituted in here. I can get rid of the mu's um, and get half lambda here and one minus lambda from equation one above. And from here, it's kind of, I'm, I'm almost home, right? I'll add a lambda to both sides. That gives me one and a half or three on two lambdas on the left hand side. And then I can just multiply through by two thirds to get the particular um, parameter that I'm after, right? So what have I just done? Um, remember what I was trying to do, right? 
Line OS, Line PR, they both go through T, but there's a particular Lambda and a particular Mu that will get me exactly onto T, and I've just found it, it's Lambda equals two thirds. And by the way, Lambda is easier to use because if you have a look, um, this equation for OS is simpler than the equation for PR, though I could have easily, I mean, I can take Mu equals two thirds because apparently um, Mu and Lambda are the same anyway, that's why I just worked out. But let's put it into, um, let's substitute it into line OS, substitute into OS. And this should hopefully give me the result I was um, going for, right? So it's going to be L equals, uh, here comes the particular lambda that I found, two thirds, and I'm multiplying by R plus half P from memory. Um, and then you can see if you just cast one eye towards the result you're trying to prove, that is the two thirds R plus one third P that they were after. So I'm just gonna conclude that with as required, okay?